Hi, it's Tanya Williams here from Digital Conversations. Today I'm talking to Chris Preston, who's the Chief Marketing Officer at the Vita Group. Now, the Vita Group was established in 1995 by founder and CEO Maxine Horn, and it has been transformed from a single telecommunications store into a multi-brand, multi-channel, publicly listed company. And while some of you may not know the name Vita Group, you'll definitely recognise a few of their brands that include PhoneZone and NextFi. And they're also a leading channel partner for Telstra and Apple in Australia. So Vita's key competitive advantage is its vibrant and entrepreneurial culture and proven systems and processes for getting, growing and keeping the right people, which make it a progressive employer of choice. So hi, Chris. How are you? Good, Tanya. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So we're going to dive straight into the deep end with our questions. Um, over the past, uh, past five years, obviously, there's been a lot of uptake in digital channels in Australia. So what importance do you guys place on digital marketing versus traditional marketing? And how has that changed, I suppose, when you compare it to the first stores you opened to what you do now? Yeah. Um, well, I guess probably the first point I'd make to that question is that we really try hard not to live in a world of, of digital or traditional marketing. Good. Uh, I we love really to try to, that. <laughs> we, we try to work in a world of, of where it's integrated, um, because the yeah. the more siloed the two approaches are, the uh, the more inconsistent the customer experience becomes. So where possible, we're we're very integrated. Uh, that said, the um, uh, the the landscape has changed dramatically in the in the 21 years since we you know since we opened our first first store. Uh, the advent of, of digital marketing uh, allows you to be far more targeted, allows you to be far more real time uh, and far more measured in, in your approach to marketing. So it's, it's a very, yeah. very different world. So when we open shops today, uh, we, have the, we have the luxury of being able to engage in, in, with social tools like Facebook to help connect with the, the local community, uh, to be involved in digital geotargeting so we're talking to the right, the right customer. And we're yeah. even playing yeah. with uh, beacon technology so that we can be hyper-local now and of course they're they're things that just simply weren't in the uh, in the vocabulary 21 years ago um i guess though probably the the thing that is standard or has has remained the same over that period of time um is that i guess irrespective of the technology that you've got at your disposal the the thing that we pride ourselves on in in making us successful is the interactions particularly in the retail world the interactions that our people have with their customers and the experience that they give those people and that's certainly something that hasn't changed in in 20 odd years that we've been doing this yeah yeah so in terms of um, you mentioned integration and uh, one of the things i often talk about to clients is what i call traditional so it's taking the traditional and digital and bringing them in together so when you said that i was like yes i'm glad that you're talking about integration i love it so do you guys integrate digital into your systems and processes as well or is it more of a customer facing focus for digital yeah look we we certainly endeavor to i think i'd be lying if i said we we'd nailed it um but probably an area that we have uh, made pretty good headway in the integration from a systems and process perspective is in our uh, our b2b channels yeah. so we've got uh, quite a strong offering in both the smb and and large market offerings through a couple of different businesses and sort of two and a half nearly three years ago uh, we embedded the salesforce.com CRM platform uh, into our business, which is, has given us uh, the opportunity to manage the the end-to-end -end, uh, engagement process with our customers, which of course gives us great insights and visibility into how they are uh, they are interacting with us. Uh, and certainly yeah. from a from a marketing perspective, it's allowed us to overlay some pretty powerful marketing automation technology also into the mix. So not only are we able to you know, engage with them. Um, uh, with the right message at the right time, you know all those all those desirables that you want to have. We've also been able to overlay some pretty powerful uh, lead scoring methodology on top of that, also. So we're yeah. we're measuring the level of engagement that our our leads and our customers have with us, so that we can predict the next stage in the in the conversation. I imagine you guys would have a massive amount of data coming through all your stores that you need to measure somehow, right? Yeah, I mean we we've got reams and reams of of data. Um, we analyze a lot of data and you know sometimes we've got too much data um, to play with I think I think the secret is really sort of diving in there and making sure that uh, the the data that you're using is meaningful and you can actually do something valuable with it 
Yeah, I think that's very much the key, and, and obviously collecting the right kind of data, um, and and look at what like looking at what the relevant metrics are is is really important for you. Yeah, absolutely. So how do you manage, uh, I suppose, let's just go talk on a, on a social level. How do you manage your social channels from a store level to a, to a head office level? Because obviously you've got stores across the country. How do you, have you guys got policies in place to decide who does what, who manages uh, what yeah. different, like, the different areas? Like how does that look for you guys? Yeah, so our, so we've got quite a strong social presence uh, in both of our, in both our, our retail uh, businesses and also in our B2B businesses also. Um, from a retail yeah, sense, yeah. Uh, the vast majority of our stores have a Facebook presence uh, and that Facebook presence is, um, is really important in terms of connecting with local communities, which is something that we value very, very highly. Um, so in order for that to be successful though, of course, we need to get uh, good content, engaging content and you know, it needs to be local as well. Uh, so we rely very heavily on our on our local teams to contribute to that process, um, but centrally we collate all that information from them. Um, we edit that information and we publish it for them. So we play a sort of a dual role. We source the local local content, but we I guess quality control it from a central perspective. Um, yeah. From a from which, which often happens a lot with multi stores and franchise type brands, I suppose as well. Yeah, yeah. Look, I think. You know, I think the, the risk if you don't play that role is that you can dilute your brand um, through inconsistent messaging. So we, we think it's a, it's a really important part of the process to, to follow. Um, we're also really active in this space, in the, in the B2B space, from a, particularly from a LinkedIn perspective. So we encourage all of our sales team to have an active presence uh, on LinkedIn. We help them to build compelling profiles. We, we help them to uh, share engaging content. In fact, we, we provide them every week with a list of content that they can share and, and comment on to, to really sort of drip feed that process. So again, we rely really heavily on our sales team from a B2B perspective to be the face of, of, of our brand from a digital perspective. But at the same time, we really carefully monitor what's, what's happening. Uh, we understand exactly how broad our, um, our connected network is. We understand how much reach we're getting through it. Um, and we also just started me uh, measuring uh, our social selling index. Um, so we understand okay. how effective our, our sales team are on, on LinkedIn, um, which gives us a really good uh, health check, if you like, on how, how strong uh, and, and compelling our brand is in that space. I love the fact that you're doing all that on, on LinkedIn. I think um, it's so rare to hear a company talking about uh, empowering their staff and, and helping their staff actually use those channels more effectively. Like you, just, you just never hear of it. So that's extremely impressive that you guys are doing that. So do you guys have a, uh, a content strategy for all of your brands? Uh, look, the, the place where we have probably executed a content strategy best is in our large market space. So uh, our Vita Enterprise Solutions brand, which, uh, which targets uh, larger organisation government bodies, um, where what we found is that uh, over 50%, over in fact, 57%, if you want to be precise, of the, of the buying journey is completed before our customers or prospective customers are, are coming to us or, or our competition. For that matter, yeah, yeah. So what we've done is we've um, is we've built out a series of personas, target personas. We've built, we've mapped out customer journeys, and then we've set about building a series of um, uh, content pieces to target the the um, the persona at the various stages along the customer journey, particularly early in the piece, so that we're getting them before that yeah, yeah. fifty-seven percent time frame. So we're getting them while they're researching, so that we can help influence their thinking at that point in time. So we're probably yeah, yeah. six or nine months into into that journey in any sort of serious way, um, but we've had yeah, some yeah. success. We, you know, our, our top bit of content was an article called uh, "The Top Three Things That Your CFO Must Know About Cloud Computing," and we've had over nine thousand people view that article. Um, so we're making pretty good headway, and we certainly see that as 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 we struggle to get ahead of the curve and get engaged with our our customers and prospective customers early in the piece, that a content strategy is going to be absolutely key to doing that. Yeah, I mean it's all it's all about telling stories these days, isn't it? And engaging with an audience in a totally different way. I remember when Facebook first came out, and you would just post random stuff, 
and there was a lot of sales messages and now you look at you know you do that now and it's just the total wrong thing to do but it's it's evolved in in such a, a big way in the last even in the last you know two or three years let alone the last 10 years you know absolutely you know in the in the business yeah you don't dare go down that path it's all about building credibility and being a thought leader um and disrupting yeah. it's not a, not about selling selling is the is the output it's all these other powerful inputs that uh, that make the difference exactly. exactly it's good to see someone that gets it <laughs> so do you guys see digital as a um as a, a driver in, from a marketing point of view what does it support i know and i know you talk about integration but from a from when you when you guys are planning your campaigns do you Sort of drive them with traditional and support them with digital or is it the other way around or is it really an integrated approach to both well um it, well it should probably be a, a horses for courses scenario so with the with the customer at the at the heart of it so what's what's the right way to engage with the customer should be the i guess the lead question uh, that said yeah. i guess because you can get digital to market quicker um it is very measurable and you can refine and optimize on the go, there's a really strong argument that says lead with lead with digital, uh, learn fast, and then replicate that into uh, your traditional channels along the way. And 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 that's something that um, we probably don't do all the time, but we certainly do it on on occasion. And and you know where you have the the luxury of time, you can take those learnings and uh, you know and and make mistakes in the cheaper channel before you make them in the expensive channel. Yeah, and I suppose the great thing with digital as well is you can measure everything. Absolutely, that's the key. You know? Absolutely, yeah. the key. You, you know, uh, and you know, I think that um, if you compare the the two channels, uh, if you want to call them two channels, um, that's the 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 hands down um, most desirable uh, feature of digital is its measurability. Yeah, and can stop you making very costly mistakes. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so how important is um, creating digital communities for you guys? I mean, you've got a number of brands that sit under the Vita group. Do you, uh, is your focus on creating communities with each of those brands? Like, what does that look like? Because obviously most people probably might, might not be aware of who Vita group is, but they are familiar with all of the brands that sit underneath that. Yeah, uh, they, they certainly, I think there's probably two parts to that answer because each of the brands absolutely has its own identity. Um, yeah. and, and from a community perspective, I already sort of touched on that before when we were talking about social. Community is really important to us. Um, you know, our, our retail stores, the local, the local communities uh, around our retail locations love hearing local news. They love meeting their, their local team, even if, it's, even if it's virtually, and they even love sharing in the, the successes of that local business as well. And, and I, you really can't underestimate the, the impact that when we do it right, that it has on advocacy yeah. for our brand, you know, in that in that local market, and that's how we look at it. Um, and certainly, you know, from a business perspective, um, you know, we want our we want our sales team to be thought leaders. Uh, we want our sales team to be disruptors in those very targeted communities that they find uh, on LinkedIn. So, so community and um, and and the role of digital is is really important. But maybe from a group perspective, the other the other angle to look at it. Is um, you know is from a recruitment perspective, you know. So, so we've got a yeah. we, we're very active in in using LinkedIn from a recruitment perspective, which not only allows you to I guess target the people that you want to you want to um, you want to recruit, but it also allows you to build a a community of future potential employees. Uh, you know, and if we're smart, how we do it, we can we can make sure we're seeding the right information so they understand what a great environment feeder is to work when the time is right. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a great way of looking at it as well. And not too many companies, again, are, are doing it to the level that you guys are. Um, and it certainly reflects that on, on your channels. So um, obviously you've got, you guys have a, a massive um, number of stores, you've got a lot of staff working for you. How many staff do you have in your marketing department, Chris? Oh. In, the, in the marketing department, well, I guess across the, across the various um, aspects of it, we. I'm oh, sorry, I'm just going to add them up. Um, not that it's a not that it's a it's a huge number. Um, in our retail world, we've got we've got seven dedicated retail marketing roles. We've got uh, three dedicated business marketing roles, and then we've got teams around that that support that. So we've got our our creative team, and then we've got our digital team. Um, interestingly, our our digital team um, is a is a body of one. So we have a we have a digital 
marketing manager. Is that all? Well, I'll explain. <laughs> so we, we have a digital marketing manager. She's responsible for strategy, if you like. Um, but my view is that yep. yeah, in, today, in today's world, a marketer uh, must have digital as part of their, their toolkit. You, you, gone are the days when I think you've got specialist yeah. marketers and special, specialist digital marketers and specialist traditional marketers. You, you, need to, you need to be a true generalist in the sense, and that means that you cover all areas. So, so it's very much the role of the broader marketing team to execute the digital strategy, uh, even though there's only one person who actually has the, the title of digital in their name. So we still do have quite a, quite a large group of people focused on digital from a marketing perspective. We also do align yeah, ourselves yeah. with, you know, with a number of partners as well. And I think that's important because it allows you to, I guess, stay, stay current, stay up to date in what is a, you know, really rapid and, and changing uh, environment. And you can very quickly get behind. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so I imagine that, yeah, your your team are pretty much head down but up most of the time. <laughs> You've only got that amount of people yeah, working on it. Absolutely, uh, you know, and, and you know, we measure everything that we do. We try to measure everything that we that we do. Um, we refine along the way, and you know, we we focus on the things that give us the uh, biggest biggest return. Of course, of course, excellent. So, can you share with me then what has been one of your biggest uh, challenges today from a marketing perspective? I think one of the biggest challenges that that I've faced, and I reckon most marketers around would, would say a similar thing or, you know, I suspect would say a similar thing. Um, I'm, a big, I'm a big CRM fan um, and one of the biggest challenges, I guess, that I've, I've faced is data quality. Um, you know, and I think, I think organisations go through something of a, of a bell curve whereby early on in the journey when, it's, when, we're, when you're collecting data, um, it's, a, it's a very much a compliance um, expectation uh, in terms of what data is collected and, and how it's collected and it's not until you really start yeah. to demonstrate the the value of collecting that data uh, and what it's used for and the return you get on it that you start to turn that that behavior from a compliance piece into a, an embedded natural uh, natural exercise um, and I think that you know as an organization we're sort of at the top of that bell and, and hopefully about to start running down the other side yeah, um, and it's it's interesting. It's one of those um, challenges, I suppose. When you mentioned CRM systems, it's surprising the amount of businesses that don't have any sort of uh, records on customers, or they even bother to look at it, or look at the data or the metrics or set KPIs or any of that sort of stuff. It just it always blows my mind. And it's one. I think data and analytics are, are two key areas that we're going to see. Um, more and more happen with over the coming 12 months for sure just because I think people are now starting to understand how important it is and what place it, it you know has in that whole marketing mix. Yeah I agree totally I think if you you know at the end of the day customers are the, are the lifeblood of the of your business you know if you don't understand what's going on there then um, then you know um, you're missing out on big opportunities. Oh for sure. Um, so what do you think then, and we've got constantly there's new things coming out in the digital space, there's new social media platforms, there's new tools, there's all these new innovations coming out. For you guys, what do you see as a new innovation, a new piece of technology that's probably going to have the biggest impact on your business over the coming 12 months? Um, I don't know if I can answer that, that question. But, you know, and that's that's really one of the challenges, isn't it? That that. It's so fast paced and changing and there's always something new on the horizon. Um, it's really hard to it's really hard to answer that question. I guess what I what I what I could say though is I think there are a couple of really significant trends that are that are around that are gonna shape uh, how we play with digital and, and I think how a lot of organizations will play with digital. Uh, and they are uh, I think the first one is the the massive rise of mobility. You know, we're we're very much uh, a mobile first world these days, you know, your, your mobile phone Very much. is the, at the heart of everything yeah. you do. And that's really changing the way in which you need to think about how people will consume digital content. Um, and it's changing the way with how, how you're gonna think about how people will interact with you as well. And if, if you don't have a good handle on, on how you're gonna manage a mobile first world, um, you're gonna be missing opportunities. And I think the I think the other big trend to be very mindful of um, in the Australian market, anyway, is the is the rollout of NBN. You know, so yes. over the next twelve yes. months, you know, a third of a third of Australians will have access to to NBN. You know, so as 
as more and more uh, consumers and businesses get access to to NBN, um, they're getting access to to better quality, faster internet access, which again influences the the type of content that they will consume and how they consume it, where they will consume it, and and what the opportunity that presents for marketers and for businesses um, is something that really needs to be understood. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with your thoughts on um, mobile. I mean, I know when I leave home without this thing, I hyperventilate because it's never too far from my hand. But I had this conversation with someone the other day. It's much more than just a phone these days. It's a whole communication piece. It's your diary. It's your photos. It's your, you know, your, your calendar. Your, you know, your, absolutely everything is is on that device now. And the, the numbers coming through for mobile phone usage and, and stats are just. I mean, they're, they're changing every month. It's just out of control. Um, so I think the way I and mean, even things like showroom, where people are taking. I'm sorry, web web room, where they're taking devices. Into stores and comparing products and so forth. I mean, that was that wasn't done, you know, 12 months ago. That's right. You know, it's, it's something that's that's new. That's right, and that's where I think that the the, the rise in mobility um, will will have a profound impact on uh, you know on marketers and digital marketing. Um, you know, well, it already is, but certainly over the next 12 months and beyond. Yeah, yeah, couldn't agree more. Um, so. My last question for you is, what's next for Vita Group? Are there some big, big things, changes on the horizon? Like, what's going to, what's the next twelve months going to look like for you guys? Well, I think probably the 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 only guarantee is that it's uh, it, constant change, which is how we, which is how our business rolls. You know, we're a very dynamic organisation, responding to, uh, responding to market needs and, and market opportunities along the way. I, I think from a from a digital perspective, you know, we'll we'll try to make sure that we remain as as nimble as we can, uh, so that we can capitalise on the opportunity. I think if you if you become too fixed from you know, an infrastructure perspective, but also from a uh, from a thought process perspective, then you're, you're likely to miss out on, on opportunities. Um, and I think the other thing that we'll 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 look to do across every part of our business, not just the, the digital component, is just just make sure that we we keep the customer at the heart of everything that that we're doing. You know, and and we're not about we're not about trying to do new and innovative things just for the sake of doing new and innovative things, um, it's got to add value to the customer experience and, and that's central to everything that we try and do. Yeah, and I think that's a very important point is it all really starts with the customer. Without, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I, pulling that data, understanding your customer and what they need impacts pretty much everything everything in that space, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Cust starts with the customer, ends with the customer and starts again. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for your time, Chris. It's been great to get some more insights about the Vita Group, where you guys are going and, and, and how you're using digital to really sort of impact that whole customer experience, I think, which is which is really important and obviously reflects on the success that you guys have had as a brand. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, I look forward to watching very closely what you guys are doing in the retail space over the next year. Fantastic. Thanks, Tanya. Thanks, Chris. See you later. Bye-bye.